User Configuration GPO Policies. Software Settings. Users might need certain software no matter where they go. So you can set that software to be installed through here. Windows settings, remote installation services. Uh, determine which options the user might see during an automatic setup. So over here you can go to these choice options and you have four options that are going to be visible during a uh, automatic setup process. And here they are. Automatic setup, custom setup, restart a previous setup attempt, or maintenance and troubleshooting. So this dialog determines which of those four options the user will see upon automatic setup. Here you set the log on and log off scripts that will run when the user logs on or logs off. These are of course user configuration settings. Now these correspond in a way to the settings underneath computer configuration. where you have the startup and shutdown scripts. Keep in mind the order in which these things run. The startup script runs, then the user logs on, so the log on script runs. Then the user logs off, that runs, and then the shutdown script would run. Under security settings you have public key policies, which certificates the user can use. Software restriction policies. There's not one set right now, but you can create a new software restriction policy, and this would allow you to actually limit the type of software and the types of files and whether the user can run EXEs and specifically the who can publish the uh, software that the user could use. So this would be very restrictive over what could be run on that machine. Folder redirection. What if I want to have uh, these folders that all my users use typically be pointed to one central location so I can centrally manage them and centrally back them up? I can use folder redirection. Policy-based QoS allows me to determine priorities on the packets for this user and throttle the bandwidth. Internet Explorer Maintenance allows you to determine what the user's uh, browser configuration will be. So their browser user interface from showing what the browser title should be. If you want a customized title bar to appear, your company's information may be in the title bar. Under Connection, you can set the connection settings. You can specify the proxy settings for the browser for that user. Under URLs, you can even specify what URLs and links the user will uh, have by default. Administrative templates. Now again, these are where these all correspond to a direct location in the registry that you'll be setting on that user's machine. Whatever machine that this user logs into will have these settings applied. So you can control their control panel, for instance, and how they can interact with the Add Remove Programs feature, or how their display will be managed, and whether or not they can see these features. So if you want to, for instance, hide the Settings tab and not allow them to make modifications, so that's at least Windows 2000, I can control that. I can control uh, the Programs view here, and Installed Programs and Features page, Programs in the Control Panel. Down here you've got control over the desktop. You want to remove the desktop cleaning wizard. Or what if you even want to remove the recycle bin? Not allow the user to change their, to save their settings when they change. So they can move things around on their desktop, but whenever they exit their desktop and log out or shut down, it will automatically revert to what it was before and what you had it set to on their desktop. Underneath Network, you have Network Connections. And here you can see it provides con granular control over this user's environment and how they interact with the components that let them control their LAN connections. So can I enable or disable a LAN connection, for instance? 
Uh, so you can very much limit the type of control they have over network connections. Shared folders. The start menu. Here you can see personalization control over the start menu, removing all programs list, or turning off the notification area cleanup feature. There's a lot of things under system, as you can see. Uh, for instance, my Windows automatic updates and whether they are enabled or disabled on XP Pro only. My control alt delete options. What are you going to see when you get to that screen? Or am I going to be able to lock the computer or view the task manager? Another security related feature under power management where you can prompt for password on resume from hibernate or suspend and you can force the user to have that configuration set. And Windows components. Very quickly you can see here that you have settings for a lot of different Windows features preventing access to 16-bit applications, notifying antivirus when opening attachments, and attachment manager. So you can just go through and there's a lot of different behaviors that you can control. Very granular for sound recorder. Don't allow it to run. Uh, do I, as far as tasks set scheduler, what am I going to allow? Can I prohibit them from creating new tasks? Uh, the Windows Mail features, all these built-in features from Windows can be com controlled. The Windows Sidebar feature, this is a feature in Windows Vista, so you can control that here. And of course down here you can see all the settings at once. Every single one of those prior settings and this interface allows you to use the filter options and quickly filter out things that you don't want to look at. Now right here you see managed policies and uh, policies that are unmanaged are, are going to be allow you these uh, unmanaged will allow you to make a change that will persist in the registry it will it will tattoo the registry um, that's what an unmanaged uh, setting will do otherwise if they're managed that means that they they will get rolled back if the policy gets rolled back as well And that is uh, user configuration policies.